Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Red Light Sports Ramble. As always, joined by my co-host, Evan Watollison, and myself. We are glad to come to you this evening. Uh, pretty exciting day for us, Evan. Uh, we tested out uh, Blog Talk Radio today. The test went really well. I'll let the listeners know this will be the last recording on the iPhone where I download it directly to YouTube. From now on, we're going to be doing our shows on Blog Talk Radio, and then we'll embed it, and then we'll we'll actually make a slideshow for YouTube. So we're not getting rid of the YouTube page, just that you're not going to see the the wonderful scenery of my office anymore. Tonight, Evan, I put hey, on the show. Take pictures of your office too, and post them on the slideshow. I could. The fans really want to see it. I'm sure they really. I'm sure they're going to miss the red chair. I'm sure they're going to miss the Packer mug. I know some people already miss the scenery when I'm driving, but it, you know, the thing is, I can't drive and talk to you at the same time. That's just impossible. Um, so, with that said, though, I mean, very, very big episode tonight. I mean, this this is a huge game for the Packers, Evan, on Thanksgiving. I mean, all of America's watching, but more importantly than that, if the Packers win, it puts them ahead of the Lions, and in a big way because we will then have two wins against the Lions. And this is so important. Before I turn it over to you, I actually pulled up some of the stats. The Packers have won. homework tonight. I did some homework. I I really did. I figured I'm going to give you a break. I know you're usually the homework. Yeah, my dog ate my homework. (laughs) (laughs) What kind of dog do you have? I wasn't able to get anything done, so I appreciate that you were. Well, you know, like I said, you're the guy that does the homework. You're the man with the facts. I'm just the idiot with the opinion. I wanted to try and carry. Switching roles today. I wanted to carry my weight. We're moving into blog talk radio. <laughs> I've got to do something. You know, I've got to do something. So I figured, just for you, I'll do my homework. And plus, I don't even think you knew this. Tomorrow's my birthday. So. Oh, happy birthday, buddy! Thank you. I tweeted a picture of my a cake that my staff got me today. That was very nice of them. So I figured I could do some stuff for you to give back for all you've done for me, bud. But with with that said, let's move into it. Let's get to the serious part, which is the Packers have won five straight, Evan. They're 15-1 and since 2005 against Detroit, which is just amazing. The stat that really stuck out to me, though, was Stafford against the Packers is 0-6, 10 TDs and 12 interceptions. And I know you're going to talk about this on how we have to beat the Lions, which is pressure. And that's where those 12 interceptions come from. On the downside, this four-game winless streak that we're in right now, Evan, it is the longest one since Rodgers, or not rookie, but his first year as a starter in 2008 when we lost five in a row. And so I really hope that we don't go to five winless games because that's a long time ago. And the good news, Detroit, though, is coming off back-to-back losses for the first time this season and against what I would call inferior opponents. They lost to Tampa Bay, who was, you know, we talked about it, We started the season 0-8, and they lost to a Pittsburgh team that I think is playing a lot better, but I still think that's a game they should have won. In either case, though, a win is a win, a loss is a loss. They're 6-5, and five. we're 5-5-1. Five, five and one. This is a huge game on Thanksgiving, and I'm going to turn it over to you to get into the keys for the game on Thursday. Well, keys for the game. We talked about this, you know, we previewed this game a few weeks back during the last time these two teams played. And for the Packers defensively, the keys haven't changed. You know, you know the difference is Calvin Johnson's playing this time for sure. You know, we previewed last time like he was playing, but he was a last minute scratch. But this time we know for a fact he is playing. And they also have Nate Burleson back too. But the key is they have to force Reggie Bush between the tackles. They can't let Bush get to the perimeter because if Bush gets to the perimeter, he he gone. You know, he he's gonna be gone. He he finds one team on the perimeter and he's taking it in for six. And the other thing is is when they the Lions try to get Bush the ball out in space, they have to get him to the ground. And that's where the tackling and Casey Hayward should come in nice and handy. Tremont Williams has been doing a much better job of open field tackling but they have to open field tackle, and they have to 
somehow slow down Calvin Johnson. You know, because Kelvin Johnson, he's a freak. He's a stud. He is, you know, 6'5", 230, runs, a, I think, a 4'340". They have to slow him down. And I think with that, they're going to have to use Devon House's uh, physicality at the line and have Morgan Burnett or a Sean Richardson. And that's somebody I, I you know, hope to see a little bit on the field is uh, Sean Richardson. Uh put those guys over the top on uh, Kelvin Johnson, have House uh, bumping at the line, run with them, and have the safety help over the top, preferably Sean Richardson due to his size. He's a big safety at 6'4". And they have to get pressure on Stafford, like you were saying. They have to make Stafford uncomfortable and make Stafford become Farvesque. And we all know what I mean by Farvesque, just throwing the ball up for grabs, hoping his guy comes down to it, which he – can get in trouble doing from time to time. He, he has such. He gets, oh, I was going to say he has such a big target in Johnson. He's so used to doing that, and so that's why yeah. when you talk about Richardson, you know he hasn't seen the field much, but I think this is that game where you just give him one responsibility, like you're saying, and just play the jump ball with Johnson. I think that's. I think yeah. that's. I think that's a great point, Evan. And I'm not sure a lot of fans even know the name Richardson. Because he hasn't seen the field a lot, but man, that guy, that so guy's he's coming back from uh, neck surgery, I believe. I think, I think it was neck surgery. Is either back or neck, one of the two. Yeah, but that that guy's got some size, and you know, as long as he can jump, that's that's a good point. I didn't mean to yeah. cut you off there. Go ahead. Continue, no, that's continue. quite all right. That's quite all right. Um, that's pretty much it for the de- you know defensive side of the ball. Because if they can get pressure on uh, on Stafford and make him far best, he's going to make mistakes and. Uh, try to force things he shouldn't force, and the interception total, assuming our defensive backs catch it, should climb. Uh, now, you... if we flip to the offensive side of the ball for a minute, this is where the Packers are probably going to be starting Matt Flynn. That's who it sounds like he's going to start. Um, Rodgers did practice today, which is huge news, but he's very unlikely it means he's going to play on Thursday. That's pretty much been ruled out. So look for him, like I said a few weeks ago, look for him to play against Atlanta. Yeah, that was a great um, call, bud. Up on the back a little bit there. That was a great call. You know, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the two hand wave because I totally disagreed with you. I thought he'd be out longer, but the way it's looking, at least he's back on the practice field. No, yeah. I, I was reading some of the reports, and I don't want people to say, well, if he can practice, he can play. I mean, again. He is playing in non-contact drills right now. To go out and throw the ball, he may be pain-free. But if that collarbone is not 100%, he can't play. And that's what they're and we just... Know, and we know how Detroit's defensive line is, and that was going to be my first key right there. They have to, although as you were talking uh, pre-chat, they don't have a lot of sacks, but they get after the quarterback, and they make the quarterback pay. Yeah, I wish I... You know, they, they, I wish I could have found. I wish I could have found the stat for pressures, because um, and I'll just get into it if if you don't mind. Um, a stat that I found today, and I had said this to you, and you were quite surprised, as was I, that the Green Bay Packers are tied for first in the NFL with 37 sacks. Unbelievable! It, it just doesn't seem like the Packers are getting that type of pressure. And I'm thinking a lot of these are those ones where the quarterback's rolling out. And they grab him by the foot, and he gets a one-yard loss. Because I'm not seeing a lot of pressure in the pocket from the Packers. And on the flip side, the Detroit Lions are 29th in the league, Evan, with only 20 sacks. But it seems to me that that front four is always getting after the quarterback. And so, unfortunately, I didn't have enough time to look up the pressure stat. I'm sure it's out there, and I bet you the Lions are near the top of the league in that one. But that's a great point. You know, we've got to protect, and like you said, I think it's going to be Matt Flynn. I mean, it's almost a no-brainer at this point. He came in, he knows the offense, sparked us to the to the comeback. You know, we didn't get the win, we got the tie, but he played really well. We've got to keep that front four off of Matt Flynn, but I'll let you continue on that point, bud. Yeah, we have, like, I, like I was saying, and, you know, I was basically what you were saying right there is, Exactly. They have to slow down that front four and pass rush a little bit because they might not get the sack, but they punish the opposing team's quarterback. Um, and that's why it's a good thing that Rodgers is out for this game because you know Detroit 
would, would not hesitate and take, if they have an opportunity to deliver a shot, legal or not, they would take the shot. Right. And that's why it's pretty good that he, you know, it's good that he won't be playing. But they have to control that front four and they have to get Flynn time to get the football out, which he's shown that he can get, have a pretty quick release. But what I envision Detroit's defense trying to do is what Flynn did really well on Sunday is attack the short and intermediate area of the field and take the dump off to Lacey and just take what the defense is giving him. I don't, I see the Lions flooding the short intermediate area and I see them trying to prove, I see them trying to make Flynn prove to them that he could throw the deep ball. So Flynn has to find it in his arm to be able to go over the top with it because he's going to have his opportunities, especially with the best cornerback of the Lions uh, looking like he's not going to play. I heard he was in a walking boot today. So they're going to have to be able to get some uh, balls over the top if they want to beat the Lions because the Lions are going to be flooding the, the short intermediate areas and wanting the Packers to go deep, which kind of sounds shocking when you're playing with receivers like Nelson and Jones and Boykin, but the quarterback has to be able to get the ball there. And then lastly, they have to continue to feed Eddie Lee to see the ball, and they have to block much better this week for him than they did uh, this past Sunday. And I know it sounds crazy because he had 110 yards rushing, but 56 of that came after contact. He, there was a few times that he got stopped in the backfield that he ran like a, a grown you-know-what man, um, and he earned those yards. And But they, the offensive line need to give him a little bit more room to run, and they have to feed Lacey and establish that ground game because if they can establish the ground game, going over the top with the play action is going to be there. So those are my keys to victory. Well, I'm going to I'm going to touch on a couple things here, Evan, and I'm going to I'm going to kind of go backwards because you led right into a stat that I found, which is establishing the run. It, and it seems like and I'll tell you what, the stats are so misconceiving this week because when I'm looking at them, that Lions defense is actually ranked 4th in the NFL against the rush, only allowing 88 yards a game. And I think it goes down to what you're saying is they're going to flood the underneath stuff. And it's not just against Flynn. And they're probably going to do it just what they're doing because it is Flynn. But if you think back to the Tampa Bay game, the, the Lions defense got burned on that long ball. They're susceptible to the long ball. Yeah. And it's because of what I think you're saying. They'll, they'll flood the underneath stuff. They're going to stop the run which leaves their cornerbacks and safeties in that one-on-one -on -one type coverage so they can get burned deep. When you look on the flip side, fourth against the run, but 28th against the pass. And so my thought in this is exactly what you're saying. I don't care if Flynn completes a pass in the first quarter, but they've got to go deep and he's got to try to get it there. They've got to show the Lions, look, we're going to try and go deep on you, so you're going to have to honor it. And I don't care if the first one is incomplete. I don't care if the second one is incomplete. They've got to show that they're going to do it. And as long as they show they're going to do it, they have to honor it. And that's where I'm going with that. Hopefully Flynn can get the ball there, though, and we can complete it because we have the receivers to do it, and we can take their cornerbacks and safeties. I, I know we can. It, it's not even a maybe. The, the thing that we got to go back and worry about is like what you said. Got to slow down that front four because the last thing I want to have happen is all of a sudden they knock out Matt Flynn and then Tolzien's got to come in in the backup role because I was not happy with the way Tolzien played. I think Flynn is the, the guy that should start. He knows the offense, and I think he's going to do exactly what you said. He will take what the defense gives him. Now the problem is if they're taking away the underneath stuff, like you said, he's going to have to throw it deep. And I think we can get him. He's still throw it deep. That's the question. And we don't know. Now, we didn't see it a lot in, in the game on Sunday, so we don't know. That's when oh, he did throw it up there is uh, a wounded duck, but you know those winds were swirling too. So, but we'll see. Yeah, we will see. Now I want to go back and touch on something else that you said that really caught my attention in your keys to the game, and that's when we pressure Stafford and he throws it up. Our defensive backs have to catch the ball. Do you happen to know how many interceptions we have this year, Evan? 
Mm, I think you said four during the pre-chat. Yeah, four. We're ranked 31st in the NFL. It, that that's just. Wonder un- how, I wonder how. Wonder what we rank for uh, interceptions dropped. Yeah, probably about 20. Now I'm just I'm just throwing a, a number out there. Don't hold me to that number. Yeah. That's my frustration talking right there. Is yeah. I've seen so many balls this year, and, and granted, some of them are tough, and and I, they're out of position. They're turning their body, but I was always taught, and I, of course, I was a soccer player, but I I did play football up until high school, and I was taught if the ball hits you in the hand, you better catch it. It didn't matter what, yep. what position you were in. And I was taught this in 7th and 8th grade, Evan. If a ball hits you in the hand, you got to catch it. And, and so if I'm learning that in 7th and 8th grade, I, I can't imagine why a professional shouldn't have the same rule. I mean, there are so many balls this year, and, and we'll go back. House had one on Sunday. We talked about it. Had he made yeah. that interception – and went to the house for seven. That's no a, pun intended. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no pun. The game changes. Complexion. Totally. And again, our defense needs to come up with a big play on Thanksgiving. And we're going to have our opportunities. I mean, you've compared Stafford to Favre every time we've talked about the Lions. But it's the truth. He's got the big arm. He's not really mobile. And he's going to take chances and force the ball. And he's going to give you two to three balls every game that you have to take advantage of. The thing the Packers haven't done this year is take advantage of those. And honestly, no, and if we have, our record might be a little bit better than 5-5-1 five, five, and one right now had we taken advantage of those opportunities. So I think you made a great point. When when we, well, we have would, would it beat the Eagles if uh, Tremont Williams is two that he almost had for interceptions against the Eagles, I believe. Yeah. We would have beat the Eagles and we would have beat the Vikings if they hang on to the interception. Yeah. And so, you know, right there you're look you're looking at a much better record than what we're at. I mean we would be seven three and one. Or no, we would have beat the Vikings. So we'd be what, seven and four? Yeah, seven and four. Yeah, seven and four. You know, if, if if we make those plays, I mean, and the one that still stands out to me is, is that touchdown to 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 Jackson, the the one where we just hit each other and the ball went in the air and he just stands there and catches it and it just gallops into the end zone. It still sticks out in my mind. We've got to make that play, and we're just not doing it this year. So, the other step. You know, before I get into some things on the defense that you mentioned, is offensively, you know, this stat just, it almost makes my jaw drop. The Packers offense, Evan, is ranked second in the NFL. Fifth passing, fifth rushing, but since we lost Rodgers, and I had mentioned this to you in the pre-chat, with Rodgers, we averaged 30.3 points a game. Without Rodgers, we averaged 18 and so the biggest difference I'm seeing here, we're moving the ball in the in the first two thirds of the field, and when we get to the last third, we're stalling. And, yeah, and that was the issue even with Rodgers. The Packers get the ball in the red zone, and they couldn't quite punch it in. So that was an issue with and without him. Yeah, and we probably would have averaged more than thirty. But I'm going to pose a question to you: Is that that is a significant drop off? I mean, that's twelve points a game. But the offensive ranking hasn't went down, which means we're getting the yards. So yeah. I think we need to figure out a way to extend drives. And what I'm talking about, Evan, is I'm even taking it farther out than the red zone. I'm taking it out when we cross midfield and we get in that middle part of the field. If you think back, when Rodgers is in that situation, that is when we ran the play action and Rodgers would do a bootleg and he would hit Nelson in the seam or we would get one of those balls where we could throw it 35 yards down the field and get in the red zone, and we're just not seeing it now that we've got, you know, we're on our fourth quarterback. But what do you think we need to do to finish drives and get points? Because that's the problem. We're moving the ball, but we're not getting points at the end of our drives. So what do you think we need to do there? You know, I think we saw it in, I think it was a Cincinnati game. I believe is when the you know they were 
get the ball into the red zone, deep in the red zone, and they couldn't quite score. And you saw how frustrated Rodgers was getting on that on those series. I think it comes down to the play calling. I think they get, you know, very conservative once they get into that red zone. And it's like they keep guessing wrong. They run when they should pass, and they pass when they should throw, you know, and they should run. So I think it's a lot to do with play calling, per se. And I think with the uncertainty of the O-line's ability to pick up a, a one or two yards, I think is affecting McCarthy's play calling a little bit. Because, you know, like last year, they couldn't pick up one or two yards if their life depended on it, so they kept having to spread the field out and throw it. So I think a lot has to do with play calling, and McCarthy has to get more comfortable with his 235-pound tailback and his offensive line and let Lacey create something. And I think they also need to run more, you know, crossing routes when they get down that down that far downfield, and maybe that quick slant that has seemed to have gone away now that we don't have. Driver or Jennings, you know, like you know what that quick slant I'm talking about. Yeah, the Kyle, driver and Jennings would take for a huge chunk of yards. Yeah, and we were trying to establish that early in the season with Cobb, which was working okay, and now we lost Cobb. So I yeah. mean, I, I know and Cobb's a good route runner, but he wasn't quite the same yet as Jennings was in Green Bay. I don't see, too, I haven't seen too much of him now in Minnesota or what Driver was when he was with Green Bay. Well, this, he's not the same right route runner yet. He's not, and and I'll I'll just I'll expand on that a little bit. The the difference right now is Cobb is still raw in his route running. And I think where you're going with this is Jennings and Driver just had this elusiveness to them. They could create the separation, and you and I both know the separation with Rodgers only needs to be one inch. I mean, I go back to yeah. the, the Super Bowl, and I think it was you know the 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 Sunday night game where Collinsworth had said. Man, if you're a defense, just put your hands up by your ear hole because that's where the ball's coming. And, yeah. you know, those are things that I think you're talking about with Jennings and Driver. They really perfected the art of route running. And they were elusive. And they could create that little bit of separation just enough to make the catch. Cobb still has to get there. And now we've, with his injury, we're, we're, you know, we're moving different receivers in and out. And all of these things that are kind of disrupting the timing, you know. So we do have to find that answer, though, because that is, honestly, Evan, that is a bread and butter play of the Packer offense. I mean, think about it. Go back over the the past four or five years. When we had a third and four, third and five, what is the play that we, we would think is coming to mind? And the defense knows it. And the defense knows it's coming. We still ran it, and we converted it. And we just yeah. we just can't do that anymore. But you know, when we look at it from from that, I mean, it will get there. I mean, we've got a lot of pieces. You know, once Rodgers comes back, it doesn't look like Hobbs coming back. the The report that I had was, you know, he didn't think he was going to be able to return this season, uh, which yeah, it's to, unfortunate. It's unfortunate, but good thing for us is that Boykin has stepped up. And Boykin, oh, yeah. you know, he's really propelled and given his opportunity, which is good. You know, I think Green Bay is turning into a wide receiver developmental factory because we're putting guys in that are developing, which is great. And then the last thing, I don't know, I haven't had a chance to see, but off, on the offensive line we were talking about, I hope Barclay can come back because I'm noticing. He did return to practice today. I, I know he returned, but I didn't see a status on whether or not he might play. Um, it's I, looking like Kim Shields and Jolly could uh, could go on Sunday. I think Barclay is is a is a big injury that maybe a lot of people weren't thinking about. But I'll tell you what, we can't have Newhouse in the game. I mean, that guy is such no. a liability in both the run and the pass. You have to account for his side, whether it's leaving a tight end in or chipping with a running back, which definitely changes the play calling. I mean, if you've got yeah, especially with how you know Bostic might not be able to go on Sunday. I mean, Thursday he suffered a concussion Sunday, so he might not be ready to go with the short turnaround. Yeah, I I, I saw. Oh, that I, I could totally get off topic here, but um, <laughs> I'm going to finish my point on Newhouse. You know, with Newhouse in there, 
it just it limits what we can do because if we've got to leave a running back in to block, now we don't have the check down. And if we've got to chip the tight end on that defensive end, he's not getting out into his road immediately. And so that really hampers the play calling. You know, yeah, the point I was getting at with Bostic, Bostic possibly not being able to play is they were leaving uh, like Corliss and Taylor in to block while Bostic was running the route. If Bostic's not able to go, then Corliss has to go run the routes. And as you just said, that, you know, like, that could potentially take somebody out of the running lane or it could leave the quarterback exposed to a big hit. Yeah, and, and I think if we get Barclay back, I mean, it'll – at least somewhat solidify the line a little bit more. And, you know, Dietrich Smith came back last game. I mean, with him out and T.J. Lang at center, I mean, you could tell there was a difference in that offensive line. It just didn't seem yeah. like they were in sync because you and I both know the center is the play caller. He, he Once the quarterback makes the audible, the center now is, is responsible for the blocking assignments. And, you know, yeah. you, you move Lang over, and he, he did an admirable job, but he's not Dietrich Smith. And, yeah. you know, I think Dietrich Smith, in my mind, you might have a different opinion, but I think Dietrich Smith is, is having a, a heck of a year at center. Nobody's talking about him. I think he's doing, yeah, a, gr- he's having, I think he's doing a great job in the middle. Yeah, he's having a pretty solid year. Now, the, you know, two games that really stand out to me where he just totally got his butt kicked was the Cincinnati game and then Sunday. Both those games, he just got his butt kicked. But other than that... He has been playing uh, very, very well this year. Yeah, I agree with you. Cincinnati was not a good game, but I think he re- he rebounded and he came back with a mean streak. And he was coming back from injury this game, and I'm yeah. not I'm not making excuses for him because that whole offensive line got their butt kicked on Sunday. I mean, that whole offensive yeah. line did. There was nobody that that stood out in my mind. But you know, I think Barkley coming back will give us a little bit more solidity on that line hopefully give Flynn the protection he needs. Hopefully we can establish the running game like you said. It's going to be tough. You know, the Lions are fourth against the run, so, you know, we got to do it early. But like I said, we've got to establish with Flynn that we're going to throw the ball deep. And at least if we give them that look and we can pull those safeties back so they're not up to stop that run, Eddie Lacy can get to the second level. You and I both know that, even with the slightest hole, because he's going to keep those legs churning which is a good thing. So, you know, I, I think we've, we've had another good good ramble tonight, bud. Again, I want to let the, the fans know, tonight marks the end of the iPhone recording. We may do it every once in a while just for, you know, for giggles. Yes. You know, to go back and, and do it because it's, it's not that hard to do. But I do want to give thanks again to, to our new home, which is yourdailycowboysfootballfix.com. Always got to give my thanks to Cass. Uh, she has been wonderful in the short time that we've worked with her. I, I recommend that you find her on Twitter. Her handle is at CowgirlCass22. Wonderful lady that knows her football. Go follow her. Get into some conversation with her about football because she'll give you some knowledge that you weren't expecting, Evan. I mean, you talk football with her. You know, she, she's just like one of, you know, one of the guys hanging in there. She knows her stuff. But uh, with that said, like always, I'll let you wrap it up, Evan. Any last words to the listeners and the thanks that you want to give? Well, we do have to give our predictions. You're forgetting that. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, I got all excited. Prediction wa- yeah, um, prediction-wise, looking at it, and, you know, if the defense could actually look, you know, attempt to stop somebody, um, which I think they will with some more established drives um, this week, but I just don't see how the Packers can keep up with Detroit. Detroit. Detroit's offense is just too strong, too you know, too bet, too good. And I'm actually for the first time since we started the Rambo, I'm predicting Detroit wins thirty four to twenty one. You're actually picking against the Packers? Yeah. Yeah, and I have to agree with you. I hate to agree with you on this one. Man, oh man, I was hoping we'd have to disagree. But uh, I'm in, I'm with you. I think at Detroit, uh, the way our defense has been playing, uh, I don't think that we're going to get the pressure that we're talking about. I hope we do, um, but I don't think we're going to. I don't think we're going to see Calvin Johnson let a ball go in in and out of his hands like against Tampa Bay. 
Um, I think he played a pretty bad game against them. I think he's going to come out. Um, you know, I know I, I watched NFL Network, and the bold prediction is I think he's going to tear us up, Evan. Um, not quite going with yeah. the, the point total you are. I'm going 27-20 uh, Lions. Um, I think the Packers score late to give us some hope. Um, but then, I, unfortunately, I think the, the defense uh, is just not going to have enough to, to make that last stop like has been pretty much our history all year. You know, we've we've had to get a stop late in the game, and we've let teams run some clock, even get points late in the game. So as you, you can tell, my voice kind of went down into that depressed mode because, unfortunately, I think we lose the game 27-20. Puts us at five, six, and one. Detroit will go to what seven and f five at that time, uh, yeah. and and really puts us in in a really tight position to have to win out, to even have a chance to win the division, and so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to hope for some help down the road. But maybe both of us picking against the Packers will be an omen that they win. Maybe. Maybe. So yeah, I got all excited. I, I you know and I. I didn't do it on purpose, but I really didn't want to give my prediction because it, I wasn't picking for the Packers. So, but with that said, yeah. Ev, with that said, Evan, I'll let you give your last thoughts to the listeners and give your last bit of thanks before we wrap it up. I know you have uh, teacher conferences tonight, so go ahead and wrap it up for us, bud. Well, just as you just said, thanks to Cass and her website, your daily cowboy football fix .com, and thanks to uh, uh, Mark who joined us today on our test of the. Uh, Blog Talk Radio, and then uh, his name is Casey, but your colleague joined us as well. Um, thanks to them. Um, and then thanks to all the listeners, and hopefully we can continue to let Red Light Sports Rumble grow and our listening base grow. But keep listening and keep giving support and keep giving feedback. Yeah, I got since you brought up Blog Talk Radio, if you guys that are listening tonight want to hear about two guys trying to learn how to run some technology in live radio, the blog is live. They can listen in, Evan. And the beginning of that is hilarious because I keep saying, Evan, are you there? Evan, is that you? And it is hilarious. For 40 seconds, I'm doing that. I also did learn, I gave this great intro today about the history of the ramble, how I started on a dare, how I brought Evan in to do one episode. It led to the co-hosting every day. Guess what I forgot to do, Evan? What? I forgot to unmute the mic. So yeah, I meant all all of that was for not. But uh I, <laughs> I can only laugh at myself for that. Yeah. But, I, here. but I'll tell you what. Uh we learned a lot in the test today. Learned how to do it. Um I think it's going to be great for us. We're going to be able to have live callers. Uh the blog goes out. You guys can listen live. When you call in, you don't have to call in to talk. You can call in to listen to the show. You can listen to the show on your phone. You can listen to the show on your computer. It is a great step. And when you're listening to it on your phone, you can hit one at any time if you want to alert the host that you want to talk. Yeah, it's great. I mean, uh, this is a huge step for the Red Light Sports Ramble. And, you know, I told I told you this on, on, on our test today, Evan, but I, I'm truly blessed that, you know, our paths have crossed. And I found another person that uh, I'm able to actually sit down and chat football with. And, and to be honest, I enjoy every night. I'm honored that uh, you and I have – have taken the ramble from the dare to where we're at. And I know you and I both have said this. We are far from over with the ramble as far as where we want it to grow. Far from over. And, you know, to be honest, that that's thankful to all the input we get from any venue that's listening. You know, we truly appreciate it because it really makes us want to do a good job when we get together and do this. And, you know, we do a lot of it for the listeners. So thank you again. Um, I know we're pushing 35 minutes, Evan, so I know you got to get off to work. Have a great night with your parent-teacher conferences. You and I will get... We'll try, Shane. Have a good night as well. Yeah, you, you go do what you got to do. Everyone else, we'll see you at the next red light. Have a great night. Thanks for listening.